Good afternoon everybody, it's Denise here, Denise Junk Journals UK. Thank you so much for joining me, it is lovely to have you here. It is um, a yeah, very cold afternoon here in Lincolnshire but the sun is shining beautifully so if you don't look at the white on the floor, if you look at the sky out of the window it's like a summer's day, it's lovely. Um, but yeah, very cold. Okay, so I said on a Wednesday I was going to start doing um, sort of a, a beginner's series, well, not necessarily uh, just for beginners, but I've had one or two subscribers who were telling me that they're fairly new and there are things they, they still don't know and they still don't understand. And I just, you know, I throw words, terms out there and um, things like that. And yeah, I remember when I was a new YouTube, uh, uh, junk journaler, um, you know, trying to work out what, what things are when people said them, you know, what's a signature, what's a tip in, that kind of thing. So I'm going to um, create a journal and the ephemera and talk about and and make lots of ephemera and um, talk about the different decorations the embellishments what we call them what we use them for that kind of thing so it, it's fine to watch if you just like watching you know junk journals being made it, it's not going to be you know that basic that you're bored hopefully um but yeah it, i am aiming it at um you know people who who are, are learning our trade as it were so yeah pop questions and things in down below and then each wednesday I'll answer if I can in the um, in the comments, but each Wednesday I'll answer so everybody can hear. So, you know, somebody might ask something that you don't even know to ask yet. You know, part of the stages of learning are, you know, things that you don't know, <laughs> you don't know, and then things that you do know, you don't know. Work that one out. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so what I thought was, I've just pulled some papers out of my, um, I've got a big file folder of just random pages for journals that I've, I've collected over the last probably 12 months or more and finally started putting them all together but you know making random journals so I think most of this is I'm going to say um uh Nanine at Shab uh, I was gonna say Shabby Dabby Doo there not Shabby Dabby Doo or Shabby Dabby Doo Da but Nanine at Collage Type so um yeah I'm not sure what which kit it is uh, it might have been one of a january pl or february planner kits actually the, the images make me think that but i might be wrong and um some william morris digitals which may or may not be and um music paper and straw paper and that's all i've done okay so if you are completely new to junk journaling i know it's most of you who have spoken to me you know have kind of watched journals being made and what have you but basically all i've got are a4 pages that I've printed on so they could be any size pages your journal can be any size and they can come from anywhere so they don't have to be printed out pages they could be you know pages from books um, they could just be plain uh, coloured pages you know the coloured um, papers that you can buy in craft shops and things like that they could be made out of 12 by 12 papers that's what we call these so that's the size of them 12 inches by 12 inches and these are usually um, or often come in pads of, you know, like, these are all oddments, but, you know, similar shades or themes, etc. And that's what we call a 12 by 12 scrapbook pad or a 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. And that's all it means, 12 inches by 12 inches, as opposed to, you know, something that comes off your printer or you might buy in the, uh, like I say, the craft shop, which is A4 in Europe, I believe. And I think it's letter size in in US and other other places so how many pages have I got one two I'll talk to you about that one in a minute three four five six I'll talk to you about that in a minute seven so I've just put seven pages in which of course you get four sides from each page so that seven seven is 14 28 pages which doesn't sound an awful lot but I'm just making a single signature. Now a signature is this bit that goes inside the cover, the main pages, that's what a signature is. Um, yeah, and I want to put quite a few um, embellishments, which are, is another word for um, decorations. Yes, yeah, so I want to put lots of decoration in, embellishments and ephemera, which um, the term can be used for a couple of things. So ephemera can be um, the pockets and the tucks and the things like that um, that you put other ephemera in. Um, I think that's what some people call elements. So, you know, pockets, tucks, belly bands, that kind of thing. And, you know, and ephemera inside those 
pockets, tucks, belly bands and things, envelopes, such like. So because I want to fill it quite a lot, I'm not going to put too many pages in it. So it's just one signature. Now you can make journals with, you know, two, three, four. So I've seen them up to seven. I don't think I've seen one with more than seven signatures in it. I've got an old book looking here at me. So you can see, I've taken the spine off this old book. You can see the individual signatures there. I think you can. Hold it up. One, two, three. Five, six, so there's seven signatures there and I'm, I've pulled some off <laughs> because I've cut the strings holding it together but I can pull that one off you see and they are exactly the same as my signatures that I'm making in as much as they are big pages folded over I'm just looking for the middle I've gone past it <laughs> yeah that's the middle there okay so that's just like this open like that so signatures are made just the same today as, as, in, as we're making them in the junk journals. Okay, so I've just got seven pages in that one. Um, seven sheets will be 28 pages. Now, I've put this in, which is just a um, a page, probably even from that book that I just had in my hand. No, it's not, it's a slightly different one. So it is from a uh, vintage, vintage book. I've, for some reason, I've inked one side and not the other but it could be any book page it didn't have to be vintage it could be just a piece of spare paper or whatever and the reason I've put a shorter page in there is I mean you can put lots of different shape pages in but I've put one in to show you later on how to do a tip in so we'll attach something to this and that's what a tip in is it's something that's attached to something else so that's why I've put a small page in and then this one is one of the the simplest pockets that I learned first that um, you can get lots of stuff in so, and all it is, is a page of, I haven't brought any papers with me, I should have, shouldn't I've got lots here. Let me just grab some out of my collaging Ooh, papers because they'll be ripped up anyway. So it is simply a page of, well, A4, I, I used it slightly smaller, I trimmed it to fit the page, and you just fold, it might help Denise if you found the middle, so find the middle. Obviously, that if this was going to be a page, it would be trimmed round and what have you. But you find the middle of it, and then you can fold it down straight. So not quite touching that middle piece, because that is going to be on a fold. So you don't want any bulk in the fold. So you can see, like that. And then you do the same with this one. Now, unless you make this a middle page, the two won't be together in the book. So, um, yeah, it doesn't matter if you don't quite get them even. Um, this isn't a middle page in mine because I've got the music paper inside. So you'll see, we open it up, my camera. No, and then there's this big pocket here. Then there'll be another page when it's stitched together, which is my middle one. Then a page and then this, this big pocket here. So they're not, they don't have to be identical because they're right not, not right next to each other. Yeah, so basically all you do is you, you do that and then you get your page it's going on. I'm just doing it on white so it's easier for you guys to see. And you put that, you put the two creases together because one will need to fold where the other one is. You put that crease and you fold it the other way because that's the way it's going to fold. Put that crease on there. Now you can cut this smaller if you want it to be. I think I made mine smaller in there yes I did a little bit just so it fit and left a bit at the top and some edges just makes it easier to deal with so you can you know you can cut this triangle as small as you want you could have it right down there if you wanted as long as your center is in the center now what I usually do when I make these is stitch so I put a little bit of glue just around this bottom bit here and then I often stitch around them now if you want stitching along there you need to do it before so stitch down stitch that down before you attach it onto there i also glue that down just to give it a little bit of extra strength as well now i may well do one if you want to see me actually make one of those if that has been a little bit complicated let me know in the comments and i can do that quickly next next time but you might you might already have got that i just wanted to show you so you can make your book with pockets in it already basically is what i'm saying um, and there are lots of other pockets you can make in your signatures before you actually sew your signature together. But I'll just leave it at that one for today. Um, 
I am going to do more than one journal with you. I'm going to make a, a couple of journals and fill them. Um, unless nobody watches at all, <laughs> if everybody's bored with it, and then I, I will stop, but it was my idea. It is my idea. Just get some scissors. Lost my scissors. Oh, that didn't take me long, did it? So I have been crafting today, but I haven't been filming, so. Hmm. Right, I've got three pairs of scissors and not a single pair here looking at me. How can that be? That cannot be right. Please don't make me stop. I've got a pair of pinking shears and that's it. That's, I put them in the wrong drawer. Oh, I'm very confused now. The, the scissor thief has been in. Well, hmm, I'm going to have to use my pinking shears. Good job I'm not, well, I might have to stop in a minute and find them. They're not under there, are they? That's so bizarre because I now have this thing, this this lazy Susan turntable outside me and everything is in it always. Scissors, glue, the works. I'm never looking for them. Strange. Well, I've been passing up Etsy things, but I don't think I use my scissors. Anyway, so the cover. And again, I'm just running over this quickly with you to start with so that we can make it and, um, and get on learning some of the bits. So all I did was I got a piece of cardboard now this is scrapbooking paper that I, you know, out of a pad that I don't like, wouldn't use. I've actually stuck two pieces together to make it a little bit stronger. And all I've done is lay a piece of fabric out flat. I creased the middle because it's quite thick. I laid the fabric out flat and I've just put glue stick on it in the corners here and there. Yeah, nowhere else just to make it stick a little bit because I'm going to sew mine if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't want to sew just put glue all over it all over one side and you want to do a fabric one into the corners and everywhere fabric glue is best and then lay it flat with a nice heavy book on it I just wanted the glue dry so that I could do this tricky a bit with you <coughs> okay so then um, what I do is I normally trim it a little bit will I <laughs> not not all oh, these aren't even the good pinking shears or are they i don't know good noise though yeah i'm gonna have to stop in a minute but i'll well i want to glue this and then i'll stop um, and go look look for my scissors and it will just spend that time uh, grabbing won't it so all i do is i cut a triangle across don't actually touch the corner I leave a fair bit just because if you get too close mind my fingers you're going to wrap it around like this if you get too close and um, your paper can show through um, but you want some of that bulk out of the corner so once it's stuck down let it let it dry a little bit and then cut your corners um, you can do this the same if you're covering with um, covering an, an envelope with paper or you know you're covering a piece of card with paper you can do it exactly the same way if you don't want to just trim your edge direct um, what you need to do is put something on the inside as well in my opinion <laughs> to cover these folds you know this where I fold this material over um, like this because that's what it's going to look like which is fine for a junk journal if that's how you like it but I like it prettier and neater than that so even that's a little bit No, it's not. I might be able to trim that because if I had some scissors, I still can't believe they're just not sitting there looking at me, but they're not. Hmm. Yeah, I'll be able to trim that when I've glued it. So I'm using Fabri-Tac on this. This will be covered over. I'm going to use one of these. I don't know which one yet. But I'm going to use one of these um, to cover the inside. Oh, nearly forgot a step. And again, you don't have to, but because this, this card that I'm using has a tendency to crack, and again, it will be covered, but I don't want it to crack underneath the paper and show. Um, I'm going to put just a strip of masking tape. Now you could put, you can glue fabric down it. You could, um, you could put washi down it. I'm going to have to cut it with my pinking shears. I could, I could cut it with my, just rip it, I suppose, but it probably won't work. Um, 
yeah just another strip of paper anything at all i just i like masking tape because it's it's that plasticky bit of it that that kind of bends maybe I should have put some glue no it'll be fine yeah just for you know constant opening and closing opening and closing if that cracks underneath it won't matter and then i am going to fold opposite ends down and glue them with fabri -Tac. okay now if you put this on fabric really thick it will bleed through and show through a little bit. So you have to, now this is going to be covered so it won't matter if it happens here, but you have to, um, whoops, come on. You have to be careful with it if you're using it on the front, you know, not to let it bleed through too much. I mean, you can cover, especially on the front cover, you know, nine times out of 10, you would put a, a topper or something, some embellishment. Now a topper is, you know, like something you make separate and then put onto the front cover or onto a tag so it's like a piece of it's like a little piece of art on its own i guess i'm just wondering if i've got one here to show you when i get the scissors i'll get one down yeah so a topper um i think that the terms come from card making actually so people who actually make you know um just gonna move you down a little bit so you can see what i'm doing greetings cards yeah they put make a topper and put it on so it's really the decoration on the front so you know if you get splodges with your glue or anything at all on the front of your cover that you don't like you can always cover it with uh, your topper or a topper um or something else i was going to say then and it's gone what was it going to say no it'll come back no doubt <laughs> Yep, so I always do opposites, that way I can just turn it over and see that I'm not, you know, bagging or gaping anywhere. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I was going to say, yeah, if you're making a, a grungy journal, so grungy is like, it's kind of a theme. So it's sort of aged, distressed, old looking, I, I guess dirty looking, um, dirty looking, not dirty. <laughs> yeah, grungy. Um, and yeah, something like a glue mark showing through is, you know, I think the idea behind a grungy journal is that it's had a life or it looks like it's had a life. You know, it's it's old and it's got like history. Now, this is what I'm saying about I could trim the corners. I might, because I have got a little bit up there. I might put some glue in and trim it. Um, but I think I'm going to put um, edges on this just to show you. So like book edges. I've got any of those around no i have to bring some out to show you okay so i then do the two opposite ends i love this bit on a it's a pity it's going to be covered up things like this on a uh, a piece of fabric my favorite and i think i have to say thank you to tanya for this fabric if i remember rightly i just wanted something that went with the green pages i'm thinking green the new shoots of 2023, <laughs> the new shoots of spring. Okay. Yep, so I've got a couple of little tufty corners that like, like I say, I could trim them and um, glue them, tuck them over, but I'm going to put, and that does work well, I do do it quite often, but I am going to put book page, uh, corners, book corners on there. Right, I'll see if I can find my scissors while that has a dry for a moment or two. Okay, well, they weren't far away. They were just underneath something in a pile, of course. <laughs> um, right, my little ones are downstairs because I was fussy cutting. So, yes, what was I telling you? I was telling you about this. So the corner, uh, book corner pieces, for those of you that... I've got some nice gold ones here that aren't too big. I must get some more of these. I want some... Right, there's a bit of an out to it and I don't want to squash that because it's not dry yet, but... You can get some really, really fancy ones of these, but basically they go on and then you squash them, squash them down so that they grab it. Um, you can glue them as well. Um, and yeah, they make your corners look really, let's put a, have a big silver one on there, look. Yeah, make the corners of your book quite pretty. Oh, I've got some darker ones, look there. 
Yep, so they're book corners, they're, they go on really easy and they're really inexpensive, you know, on Amazon. I mean, you can buy, you can buy Tim Holtz ones, he has some very posh ones, but, you know, just your basically cheap ones. Just notice my chair's creaking again. Okay, so I wasn't gone long, so that isn't dry yet. I was only gone a minute or two, nothing was far away. And then, um, yeah, toppers, I was talking about a topper. So it's kind of something like this. I need to, I am going to have a session making some toppers and we're going to make one for this. I'm not using any of these, but it's nice to have them handy. So do you see what I said? It's like a piece of art. So it's just got things layered up on it. Um, it can be fabric, it can just be um, paper, it can be just fabric, it can be a mix of the two. Um, yeah, it can be anything you want it to be, really. So these are the ones that I've got ready made. She's beautiful, isn't she? Um, Yep, so that one's nearly all paper with a little bit of fabric and it's on um, a sample, sample piece of um, upholstery fabric. This is just on a piece of paper, oops, old paper, and this is um, a fab mostly fabric -y one. I, I, I think I've done all these on film. Um, yeah, lots of lace, lots of bits of bits and pieces on it. Yeah, not for this one, you know, obviously, but, you know, the handy to have made. This one I've had a while, well, from summer, I think, from the summer last year, because I think that is from uh, Beatrix Potter. It, I think it maybe wants a bit more around it as well. It's that's on collage. It's on a collage piece of board. Um, but yeah, just a nice, sweet one. And then these, uh, I mean, these could go on smaller journals or, you know, when I said they could go on, I've got one here. postcard they could go on you know um, a journal card or you can imagine that as a tall tag yeah so that's what a topper is it's just a, it is literally a piece of art that you create and then use to embellish something else okay so I think that's dry enough for me to put this on it so I need to choose what I want what I want on so I don't think I'm ready for all the full-on florals. It's a bit early yet. This is a bit of a grungier journal. So I think I do want to use that up. I'm going to use that up on some pockets, I think. Um, yeah, and then I might coffee dye it or something, but it's a bit bright for this. So I've got these two now. I do love this one, but... Uh, I'm going to go with this, I think. It's not as thick as that, but yeah, I think it's just interesting inside. So, oh, I wonder if I can just trim that a little bit. Like I say, it's going inside one of those, that's it. Just add some thread, so it's that one. I think it's probably because I cut it with the pinking shears rather than, yeah. Now I could just go in with my art glitter, you know, um, glue, which has got the real fine tip on it. And just put a blob under there and get them flat and you know it would be fine you can see it doesn't necessarily have to have the corners but and i often put a big pocket front and back so a lot of this will be covered over as well so it won't be won't be too much in your face now there's lots of different ways you can cut and measure my pencil here or has that gone as well hmm. i expect that's that looking at me as well i've got a biro that will do um but I kind of want it just as close as I can, but without it getting into the in the way of the crease. So what I'm going to do is, I wonder if I ought to measure. I do it different every time. Sometimes I measure, sometimes I just cut it and, you know, measure with a ruler. Sometimes I just measure it by eye and then cut it. I kind of... It, Need to know where that central piece is. So roughly 14 and a half, I think, centimetres. And it's not always the same top and bottom, depending on how you've, yeah, I think 14 and a half will do, depending on how you folded it. And then the height, again, I want it as, so a shade under 22, right. So, Let's have a look where that line lands. Oh, 15 and a half. But that is, I think that's about the centre of the um, the paper. So I'm just going to cut up that line. Then it'll small enough to go into my 
small chopper which I can get on the table. Paper cutter. <laughs> chopper is the name I like to call it. Um, oh, it's a long way down there. Oh, it's getting very dark, isn't it? I hope it's not too dark for you. I know you've got a ring shining on there now. So what did I say? Can you remember? Because I didn't write it down. Shade under 22, didn't I? Yes. Well, I won't be able to tell that on there either, so. So 22 is on that line there. To back a buffet. So slightly under there. And my height should be right. Make sure I've got the... Okay, what went wrong? 22... 24. <laughs> Who knows? That line there. Oh, to back a buffet. So where did I cut it? Hmm. Was it the top of that? <laughs> Are you holding your sides laughing? I think it's about there. Oh, now I'm cutting it with my scissors. What am I doing? <laughs> Confused? Join the club. Let's just straighten it up on there. Wasn't too bad actually, considering me and my cutting. Um, am I doing the front? Yeah, it's not as hard as I'm making it look, I promise. So we were going for, was it 14? Or oh, 14 and a half. Oh, 14 and a half. I think where that will take me that way. I might just get a nice, oh no. I might as well take it off that end, hadn't I? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I'm entertaining myself. Right, about there. So you can see why the measuring doesn't work for me with the ruler. I might as well just eyeball it and just keep trimming. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's lovely. So, is the other one going to be the same? Got some nice pretty bits there now. Let's see if this one fits here, if it does. I can just copy it now, you see that? It's ever such a slightly taller. Ever so slightly. very slightly. It's nice paper this actually. No, that's a little bit too. I'm just going to keep shaving it now till I, I get it where I want it because I don't want to make it too short. Very nearly. <laughs> very, very nearly. Right, that should do me. Sorry about the noise. Yep, and then what do I want off the side? Not very much, and I'm just rather measuring, I'm just going to try that. Just hope I didn't overdo it. It's pretty on the back as well, that. Yeah, that will be fine. So it will just tuck inside those um, uh, book page corner, uh, book cover corners. So all I'm going to do is glue it down, both of these, and then what I'll do is I'll let it dry and I will stitch around it on my machine. Um, oh, before I do that, I want some fabric down the middle. Uh, so you will see it next time done. So let, let me just glue it and show, you, show it glued um, so that we can have a little bit of a play with some ephemera before today's done. This is the trouble, I want to do everything with you all in one day. Now I'm just wondering if I should have inked around that, but never mind. I haven't, so I won't sweat it. So like I say, I don't need to put too much on the middles of these really, because they're going to be stitched, but if you're not stitching, and sometimes I don't, I don't always, if you're not stitching, yeah, make sure you, 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 know, you get a fair bit of glue going on. That's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Did I even check I had the right piece here? 
I don't know if I did. Yeah, it's a lovely paper that. I don't. I should have looked on it where it was from. The strip's gone right. So I want this further out here. I'm going to put a strip of fabric down there. Now, if you don't have fabric and you're not using fabric, you can put a strip of washi tape, a strip of paper, anything down there. All you want to do is try and make sure this is the same level as that one as well even though my back is slightly taller not very much really but yeah not that you will get to see a lot of it once the journal is sewn in you know together but the top and the bottom you often can so next week we'll sew this in and start putting making ephemera and putting it in um, and maybe do the tipping we'll see see how far we get good noise isn't it sounds a bit plasticky yeah I suppose it has got a bit of a plastic coating on it it's not shiny though okay so the cloth that I always use these are wet wipes so these are like baby wipes but any kind of wet wipe um, and I take out and let them dry <laughs> so they're dry wet wipes um, but I would keep them well while the wet keep them well away from your digitals and your printed papers because yeah they they make them they make the colours run and bleed and what have you once they're dry they're brilliant for this sort of thing and they're really cheap throwaway cloths now a lot of mixed media people i've got a few but um they use them for their ink and the paints and all sorts of things cleaning up and then they use them you know reuse them in their art so they don't have to be you know wasted thrown away i do have to admit that i throw mine away i use a lot put it in upside down oh no why did i think that was upside down oh it is that's why oh no denise after all i said is this one stuck okay there you go it happens to the best of us <laughs> how many times have i done that now and showing people how to do it oh well there's no better way of <laughs> learning to do something than when you do it wrong let me tell you so yeah there's a lesson today make sure you've got it the right way up now you can see because i didn't go everywhere with the glue i didn't have too much trouble getting it <laughs> getting it off and, and it's fabric tack so it doesn't glue instantly now if i'd have art glittered that i wouldn't have got that off without making a mess it still would have come off i think um i'm sticking to me my fabric now but it would have just taken paper you know this backing off which wouldn't have mattered when you put it back down <laughs> oh dear at least i saw it on camera with you and not off camera afterwards and then thought oh i'll have to change that and everyone will know what i've done and think i'm not telling them oh, it all went so well didn't it okay we're back oh, i'm sticking to everything now i've got glue on me we're back in action yeah, so I think I was telling you what I was going to do next time, wasn't I? And I need to have a little think about what fabric I want up the centre there. Because I, I want to put it on before I stitch around it. So it's caught in the stitching. Again, you don't have to. Um, because I will glue it down quite well with fabric tack And I will just have a strip down there. It will hide that. Um, it will help this you know stay uh, stuck down with use it will um, thicken the spine for me to stitch the signature into so lots of different reasons and it will look nice so what i can't decide is whether i'm going to now sometimes i put lace but i'm not going to because it's not very pretty under there whether i'm just going to do some um you know coffee dyed plain cotton up there or i could put some of what's in here in it i haven't decided yet and i won't decide i'm not going to think about that but once that's dry and this is in here yep we get a topper on and some lovely pockets in it's going to be lovely isn't it so the first pocket i want to start with um is i'm going to make two of these now they don't have to be that big oh, i'm just thinking what a shame i'm hiding all the all that lovely absolutely hiding every every bit of it aren't i hmm Never mind, it's what I plan to show you, so what it it's what I'm going to make, and I'm going to make it with where's my papers? Oh. 
I lost it. Come out, come out. Just bear with me while I get them out. No. I'm done with it. There. That's what I was looking for, the green stripey. Right. So what you need is it's and it looks it's quite an effective looking pocket. Um again this one I've made on some on a collage background so ignore all that. But usually just um one one colour background and then um a contrasting pocket and they, they pop out really well. So I was thinking of doing the background in this. Um that one fits exactly actually doesn't it? Maybe if I do a smaller version then we'll see a bit of this round. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I'll do the background in that and we want two, two backgrounds and then, yeah, I wasn't sure, well that's quite nice. So that's, yeah, that kind of complements what's going on on the inside cover. Sorry about the creaking chair, I've told Neil but I keep forgetting to ask him to come up and actually look at it. So yeah, the, um, these pockets, you know, cover quite a lot of the background, don't they? So I think this this will be nice for the background. So let's have a look what size we've got here and make it a little bit smaller. So I've made this one five inches. It's been made a good while, this. Um, so I'm thinking four, four and a half. If I do four and a half wide, and this one is, sorry, I didn't tell you in centimetres. So just over 12 and a half centimetres. So it will be 11 and a half centimetres or four and, a half, four and a half inches that I'm doing. Shall I write it down? What have I got here? Four, oops. 4.5 by, and this one is just shy of eight centimetres or uh, eight inches, 20 centimetres. And I think um, if I make those pockets a little bit shallower, Yeah, I'll do it seven. Okay, so that's inches. And then my pockets need to be ever so slightly less wide. What have I got them? About um, two or three millimetres less wide than that. I'm in inches though, so what quarter of an inch? So half an inch off, so four inches for the pocket. And I won't go quite as high either. So I've done that one at two and three quarters, so I'll do it at two and a half. Okay, so times one times two, right. And then I need the whole thing times two <laughs> because I want one front and one back. So this one, I wanted seven inches high. Now this is a 12 inch pad so I won't get two one on top of another so I'll have to have them side by side so that's my height um, I think if I do that both sides and then cut across with my scissors because I've got a line I went, oh, am I on that one one of those two lines and again I will then be able to get it into Sorry if that's making your eyes go funny. Lines do that, don't they? I'll be able to get into my chopper again. That's it. And we'll cut that. No, I won't cut the edge off. I'll leave the edge to cut on the... What did I do with it? Did you see? There. Okay, so I wanted four and a half inches wide. And that, I can measure that on here. Four, five, where's the half there? About 11 and a half centimetres, was it? Is that what we said? I'm just going to cut that by a row piece off the top. Um, what did I say? 11 and a half. About there. And again, I'll just take a, a smidge off the top. Okay, so I made that look harder than it is as well. <laughs> so just a base piece. 4.5 by 7 and then we need pockets 4 wide by 2.5 
high. So let's see. So if I, yeah, six is exactly half, isn't it? That just give me a little bit of room in between. So I'm just going to do this to get it in my chopper. Roughly about half, six by six, because it's, it's a 12 by 12. You see how I cut straight, not. Um, I've got rid of it again. So the height will do last, and that is two and a half. So we want four inches wide. Oops, back to front. So this edge, back to front and upside down. This edge should be straight because it is, no, it's not. That edge will be straight because it was cut four inches wide. Cut by the machine. Okay, so that's the width. Doesn't look very big, does it? And two and a half, did we say? Which is about six and a half. That's very tiny looking. Yeah, two and a half high, that's what we said. So let's go again. So those two pieces, oops, should fit on there and there like that. Yep, yeah, lovely. If I've got them the right way up, I want two more that size now, don't I? Did I have another straight edge? Yep, yeah, that uh, Hmm, which edge is straight, that one. Do it that way then, Denise. So what do I want? Two and a half there. Is that a straight edge? Yes, it is. No, well, that's not right, is it? I want it that way, two and a half. Seven. <laughs> Is that way? Let's <laughs> confuse myself. And two and a half that way. And I want two of them. Okay. Just have to make sure I get them the right way up because it's got a very faint pattern on it and it's hard to tell. Okay. Blimey. I hope we can see okay because it's getting really dark. So I'll make two, but I'll only make one with you right now. This one's all right and this one's all picture, so let's Oh, excuse me, hiccuping. Let's have one of each. Picture at the bottom and writing at the top. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I'll make one now. Now I am going to stitch around it like I have here. Um, but I'll do that off screen. So I didn't round my corners on it. They look really nice with rounded corners as well, but I'm not going to, I don't think. I'll leave these square. I did... Um, Put a divot in here and when you've got two together to get them lined up is always good it always looks nice so just line your two pockets together and then even if I don't get them you know proper central they will be in line with each other just about as much as the eye can tell and then of course ink And again, you don't have to stitch it, you are right way up, aren't you? Yes, I'm, I'm uh, paranoid now, I've done that. Move that out of the way. You don't have to stitch it round, it will be perfectly secure uh, glued without glitter or any strong glue. I've, um, I've used them like that myself. You could, uh, you could draw faux stitching on them. I think I am going to just round the top of this, just to give it a little bit of something, but not the rest. So just round the corner the top two like that and then put that one quite low down at the bottom oh excuse my stomach I've got a grumbly stomach and art glitter have I had it out yet no it's here it's on the twirly whirly <laughs> and literally the three sides now you can use a grid mat or your ruler to also get them you know central on top of each other but I'm hoping that because I've got the lines going that way which would be my biggest problem why did I put that one there uh, centralizing them should be fairly easy just because I haven't really got 
um, you know, that much. Oh, come on, you don't get along with the art glitter. I haven't really got much that each side. That's it. That looks like there's more there to me, but maybe that's not quite a straight edge as it could be. Um, yeah, I think I wish to put a bigger divot in. And uh, the stitching round here will hide that. So you could always put lace or something round if you had a similar issue. Um, of course, you can, once you get good at what you're doing, you could make these into gusseted pockets if you would like, you know, to put thicker. And I'll talk about that with you in another video. If you'd like to put more um, in them, you know, for them to hold more. Yeah, and that's it. And then we will we'll embellish them uh, next time when they've been stitched round. So I'll do two of those and stitch them round. Um, I'll put some fabric in there and stitch around this and then we'll put these in together. Now this is going to be, um, you know, distressed and brought down a little bit more. I might even, if I find that green too much, I might even do a little bit of stenciling, um, you know, over this, this green that's showing. But I'll wait and see what we're going to embellish it with first. I might, there might not be a lot of it showing. I might, I might put some, some lace and, and what have you on it. Yep, so you have to imagine this one here. So you can now see, because I've made it smaller, you can now see, look a little bit of what's going on round, um, you know, paper-wise, and obviously it's going to have something down the middle. Okay, so like I say, if you are a beginner, I mean, anybody can talk to me in the comments, please do, but if you're a beginner and there's something you didn't understand or you want to, you know, learn or me do more slowly or in more, more detail, let me know in the comments so it's going to be every Wednesday I'm only going to do it once a week um but yeah thank you for joining me and if you're not a new beginner thank you for watching anyway and um yeah also let me know in the comments um what would be nice would be any tips and tricks you know if you've been doing it a lot of years I know there are people who watch you've been doing it longer than me if you've got some tips and tricks for people who are new to it pop those in the comments too okay thank you so much I will see you tomorrow for Tanya at Tatty Treasures um gentleman's kit loving that loving playing with that and uh yeah see you then have a lovely evening bye for now